Hello and welcome to another video brought to you by Truth About Training. Today we're going to be looking at the squat, so let's get into it. So the squat works pretty much every single muscle within the lower limb. This is what makes it a crucial exercise in anyone's training program. However, the main movers are the quadriceps and the gluteus maximus. This is because of the large demand on knee extension and hip extension during the movement. So let's take a look at what we should be looking for within a squat. Ideally, we'll have our feet placed roughly shoulder or slightly wider than shoulder width apart, with our feet turned out to about 30 degrees or whatever is comfortable. By having our feet turned out at this degree, it allows our knees to stay in line with our body as we descend throughout the whole movement. This will place less stress through the knee, disproving what many people say when they think that squatting is bad for your knees. Only squatting with poor form is bad for your knees. When we're standing in the upright posture at the beginning of the squat, we want to create a nice tight core to cushion our spine so we don't break into any spinal flexion or extension throughout the movement. By bracing the core, we will be mentally contracting and physically contracting the rectus abdominis, internal external obliques, transverse abdominis, erector spinae, multifidus, and other low back muscles. So to begin the descent of the squat, you want to slightly bend at the hips first and then lower yourself to the ground. During this phase, there's a few key points that you want to remember. Number one, maintain a neutral spine. You don't want any excessive extension or flexion of the spine during this, otherwise it can put excessive load through the joints of the spine. Number two, don't collapse the knees inwards. You'll see this in a later video, but collapsing the knees inwards can put excessive stress onto the knee joint and cause damage there. Number three, lead with your hips on the way back up. Most people will try and push through their feet and the knees, but the most effective way is to imagine leading with the hips up, and this will create the most effective hip drive and lead to better form. Number four, engage your lower back to avoid butt winking. Again, this is covered in a later video, but butt winking is when you round the lower spine and tuck your pelvis forward and then extend it on the way back up. It's worth noting that some people's squats are gonna look different, even when they're trying their best with all the tips given. This is because people with long torsos and short femurs are gonna have a more open hip angle and knee angle. Whereas people with a short torso and long femur we're going to have a more closed hip angle and a more closed knee angle. So now let's take a look at how squats can go wrong and how we can fix them. In this first video, you can see that my knees are collapsing inwards. This shows that the external rotators of the hip are not quite firing correctly to give stability in the movement. In order to help create this external rotation force when performing this movement, there are a couple of ways you can do this. The first way is by mentally imagining turning your feet outwards while you're performing this task. This will create tension on the outside aspect of your leg and force it to stay open, preventing your knee from collapsing inwards. The second way is to put a resistance band around the knees. This will provide an active resistance in pulling your knees inwards. You may think that this might not work, but your body will then actively engage the external rotators to counteract this force of pulling your knees inwards and so stop you from collapsing your knees. We want to avoid this collapsing of the knee because otherwise it increases the load on ligaments and tendons within the knee joint, causing excessive stress and damage which may be irreversible in future or just very painful in the beginning. In this next video, I'm struggling to complete a full rep due to poor ankle mobility. This can be fixed by placing a book, weights, or a plank of wood underneath the heel of your foot. This will reduce the need for ankle range of motion by taking it out of dorsiflexion and put it more into plantar flexion. Ideally, this is a short-term fix and you should work on flexibility and mobility of the ankle joint so that you don't need this addition of the heel raise. One good way of fixing this problem is by assuming the bottom position of the squat and just holding that position. This will force you to stretch the calf muscles at the ankle and improve your mobility within the ankle joint. 
This will also help to reinforce a good motor pattern for when you perform the squat normally or weighted. Now in this video you're going to see my lumbar spine going through extension and flexion with the pelvis tilting anteriorly and posteriorly during this motion. This is otherwise known as a butt wink. Now this is not necessarily a major problem because sometimes you need this mobility around here to perform a deep squat. However, this can cause unnecessary loading to the lumbar spine and increases your chance of injury. You may see some people always performing a butt wink during the squat because there is a theory that it is a more structural rather than a flexibility issue. The butt wink can sometimes be rectified by stretching the lower limb muscles such as the hamstring and glutes because they may be super tight that as you go down in the squat it doesn't have the mobility to extend and so pulls the hip anteriorly round in order to give you that mobility to get the depth within the squat. One way to also help fix a butt wink is just to reinforce good mental practice. Always think about extending the lumbar spine when you're performing this and making sure that you don't break into flexion or extension. This can be quite difficult and will take time, but it will be beneficial if you look to then increase weights, reps and sets performing the squats. In this video, we're moving away from the problems within the lower spine to the upper spine. Here, I am lacking poor thoracic mobility within the squat. You may be wondering why upper mobility in the thoracic region is relevant with the squat. Having good thoracic mobility is very crucial within the squat because if you have limited range of motion or tight pecs and latissimus dorsi, then it's going to cause you to round and lean forward, resulting in a compensated movement pattern which won't be as efficient and causes the load to go through a different centre of mass that isn't the most efficient for the movement path. To help ease this, you should look at stretching your pecs and latissimus dorsi. You can also look to improve thoracic mobility by performing specific exercises that look to increase range of motion within the thoracic spine. Now that we understand how to perform a good squat and what to look for in a bad squat, let's talk about some regressions and progressions that you can use to make it easier no matter where you are within your fitness journey. The easiest place is to start with a box squat or a chair squat. This will just really help to groove the motor pattern that you'll need for future and it places less effort on ankle mobility, hip mobility, as well as just general strength. Now, because you won't be going through the full range of motion, a box squat will put more effort onto the quadriceps than the glutes. So depending on your training goal, this may not be for you, but it is a good place to start if you are new to the squat exercise. Once you feel comfortable with your strength gains that you've now achieved through the box squats, you can look to do what's known as the door squat. So here you're going to hold on to the door handles and just perform the squat. The door acts as a stabiliser so you don't have to worry about falling over and it can also help to give a good stretch to your lats and help to keep that thoracic extension during the whole movement. Once you feel comfortable performing the squat without assistance, this is when I would recommend that you look at trying to perform a squat by yourself. If to begin with you don't want to do tons and tons of reps, you can look to get down into the bottom position of the squat and hold that isometrically. When at the bottom position, you can use your elbows to push your knees out to help groove that most pattern if this is something you're struggling with. Now then, if you want to go on one more progression and you don't have lots of weights or anything that you can use as a resistance, then a good exercise to perform is the pistol squat. This is a unilateral exercise that will place a lot of effort through the working leg and it requires good ankle, knee and hip mobility, so it is quite a high level of progression. And with that, it's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and you found this interesting and it, you can look to incorporate it into your training sessions as well as your daily routine. Make sure to leave a big thumbs up and subscribe down below and I'll see you in the next video.